Public Library District Board of Trustees to order. It is 7 p.m. on Wednesday, February 15, 2017. Diane, please take the roll. Linda. Here. Karen. Uh, must be running late. Barbara. She, yes. Here. Gave prior notice. Rob. Here. Tim. Is he coming in here? Uh, you know what? He was going to talk to the Arts Council, so he's probably going to take that. Okay. Carolyn. She was going to do this. And then, uh, Patty? Here. Okay, please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you everyone for coming on this beautiful February 15th. Um, our first on the agenda is, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes of the regular board meeting of January, wait, yeah, okay, January 18th, 2017. So moved. Second. Rob. Thank you. Any corrections? I didn't see any myself, but I don't know if anybody else saw it. I wasn't here. Thank you. It's my place. present a special award to reference librarian Neil O'Shea. In honor of the work Mr. O'Shea has done for vets in the Veterans History Project, Mr. Lee and Mr. O'Shea, will you please come up? And do we want to have Mr. Lee say a few words? I believe so. Mr. Yes. Lee, would you like to say a few words on behalf of yes, I, Mr. I O'Shea? Would. I grew up in a library. It's the first thing, my mother was a librarian trustee in Brookfield for many years. But I did like to tell you about this Patriotic Service Award. The dictionary defines a patriot as one who loves his country and zealously supports its authority and interests. The Patriotic Service Award is for members in our assembly with the uh, Knights of Columbus or community. It is not required that a member be a, a Knight of Columbus. He, he can participate in the patriotic programs, displaying the flag, veterans assistance, taking an interest in the history of the in the, the history of destinies, the one's country. These are some of the ways we show our love and respect for our country. I put this in for Neil O'Shea for the following nomination. Neil O'Shea has been working on a veterans history project for the last past 11 years. This project is done for the Library of Congress and with the help of the Niles Public Library. The project consists of interviewing veterans of all wars, conflicts, that are willing to share their stories. He felt it was a service needed in, at the library. As a result of his efforts, he also serves as a breakfast for veterans of wars, including widows and veterans, as part of the project. So far, the majority of veterans have participated in the project, served in World War II, and the Korean conflict. A total of 65 veterans have been, in, have been interviewed since he started the project, and of those, four were women, three served on the home front, and one served overseas. The history is the first-hand knowledge that Neil obtains from the veterans. 
when he asks the questions during the interviews, it's, it's priceless. After the interview, Neil provides a written copy of questions and answers to the veteran to ensure accuracy. Once proofread and corrections are made, a final copy is given to the veteran along with a CV of the interview. He will soon be providing a DVD of interviews as well. I had the opportunity to participate in the Veterans History Project one year and followed Neil, found that Neil was very patriotic and passionate about the project. I believe Neil has done a wonderful job on the project. Not only did he interview me, he helped me find information about a neighbor who was declared missing in action and was found and he has found additional information on three men that were from my hometown that were killed in action. He also continues to be patriotic by following up with me with more information he finds. I recommend Neil O'Shea for the Patriotic Service Award. Thank you for your consideration. It's hard to put it in words, but uh, that's the best that I could do. And uh, as a result, there's an article which I gave to Neil that they're even going beyond what they have done so far. There's a, I'm going to leave a copy of it. I think I gave Neil a copy of it already. So I won't repeat that. I'd like to present Neil with this award. This is from Raymond P. Hillinger Assembly. It's the Knights of Columbus fourth degree. The fourth degree is our patriotic degree. You've probably seen Knights of Columbus wearing capes and chapeaus. And as a result, you're a fourth degree member when you wear that. I present to you from our Faithful Navigator, Frank Koresh, and you will deserve it. to receive this uh, from the hand of Mr. Ken Lee because Mr. Ken Lee has a fair amount of insight into what constitutes uh, uh, civic service, public service. Uh, Ken Lee served his country in uh, two world wars. Uh, he moved to Niles in uh, 1957, uh, raised a large family. Uh, he himself was voted uh, Citizen of the Year in Niles. He was the, uh, knight, the knight for the Knights of Columbus in the state of Illinois. and. What I think really makes him relevant to us here is he was Rich Wojnicki's first computer teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably the only one that has four discharges. I was in the Navy in World War II, and I was in the Army during the Hawaiian conflict. And the problem was, I didn't go overseas because I had too much education. I had uh, my bachelor's in mathematics, and uh, as a result, I, they classified me as a scientific 
professional specialist because I knew about every computer that was in the U.S. right now. And that in those days, they were all big. And they were only at a few universities and a couple of army installations. In fact, uh, at the time that I was working with computers, NASA didn't even have a computer. Wow. Awesome. <laughs> so, uh, well, it's probably a foreign word almost. <laughs> it, uh, it's very interesting uh, to uh, go back. I, I saw the movie uh, recently, uh, uh, the history of the uh, black, uh, three black girls that were in uh, NASA and uh, it brought back a lot of memories. Uh, they were, I was about two years before them, <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I realized the problem at that time because uh, there was a lot of segregation uh, in offices and in uh, locations. And uh, it's one of those things that changed over the years. But uh, it's a hard thing to write about, but uh, that's what I'm planning to do. I think I'm about through the first eight grades right now. <laughs> but uh, every time I open up another box at home, I find more stuff. And I, I got more stuff. At, Anything you want, I can find it. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate coming here, and I appreciate Neil, all the work he does. He, he gave me three more people that I did. I knew one, one of the family names, and uh, they showed the, their home address, and I was from the Brookfield, uh, Illinois. And as a result, uh, I knew those streets, and one was about a block away from the Catholic church that I went, uh, when I went to school in my grades five to eight. And I just couldn't believe it. He was 23 years old when he was killed. And uh, I knew I was going in when I, when Pearl Harbor came, and I know it was, and that was in 17 years later, I got out of all the controls of the, the, uh, the military. <laughs> so I have a discharge from the Navy, Naval Reserve, Army, and the Army Reserve. <laughs> and. Uh, they finally got rid of me when I was 30 years old. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank well, you very much. Thank, thank you. you. budget expectations by $13,000 per month and exceeded expectations by $273,000 per year. Uh, Year-to-date variance is primarily due to real estate tax uh, collection rates. Uh, salaries for the month are $1,100 under budget and shorter budget estimates by $64,000 or 3.4% for the year. Uh, library materials for the month uh, $6,500 in the budget or 10.5% and $46,000 over budget or 10.6%. This is due primarily to payment of annual subscription fees and some library database product offered, offerings earlier in the calendar year and advanced buying of adult DVDs, downloadables, and periodicals. Library operating expenses 
is $10,000 on the budget, uh, or 32% for the month. Uh, 32,000 uh, or 14.5 percent under budget for the, for the year to date. Uh, due primarily to slow spending in the per capita software and printing line items. Uh, GNA expenses, uh, 6,000 under budget estimates, so 25.2 percent for the month, and uh, 42,000 under budget estimates, or 24.6 percent year to date. Due primarily to slow spending in the consultant, promotional, and legal line items. Employee fringe benefits is uh, $1,960,000 over budget due to the payment of $2 million to IMRF to uh, reduce our liability in the month of December. Uh, utilities is with $1,000 of budget expense monthly and, and within $8,000 year to date. Uh, that's under budget uh, for the month. The net deficit is $453,000 which is uh, $55,000 favorable to the budget in that deficit, uh, uh, $507,000, and is $1,458,000 unfavorable year to date. That's it. Um, also, at this time, uh, Greg, could you, uh, or actually, hang on a um, this is what I'd like to ask you, Dennis, about uh, us not transferring money for the book sale funds to the firms. So last month we have made a board decision to not transfer book sale funds because they are no longer um, actually doing any type of the processing. They're not um, in any way getting, I mean, doing it fundraising themselves. So we had a chunk of money on the actual uh, sales, and then we opted to not transfer. So I just want to know the legality of that. I think Susan's kind of talked to you about that. And so the way I understand it is the library has its book sale of books and materials throughout the course of a year. Mm -hmm. It's being conducted by staff. And the, the money is taken from the book sale and put into our general library fund, correct? Uh, well, uh, up till last month, it was uh, it was taken uh, in monthly and held on the balance sheet as a liability, as a payment for the funds, okay. uh, pending decision of but the board. It is in the library fund. So it is, yeah, it is in the library fund. Okay. Um, and then in the past, you transferred that out to the front. To the front, sorry. So um, I looked into this, and my legal opinion is that there is no, there is no legal obligation or any other obligation that I could find that requires the library to transfer that fund to, or continue to transfer those funds to the front. Can I ask a question? Sure. There's no legal reason to continue to transfer the funds. Was there ever a reason that we should have been transferring the funds? What was the purpose initially that we were giving them this money? I do. Wasn't it because of the collection of books? Wasn't that how this all started? I'm not sure because it's always been the same way since I've been on the board. I just know how it's ran in other libraries. That's okay. the only way I can compare. So my question is, I'm trying to figure out why we're doing this now. I think your statement was that they no longer participate in the process. Is that what we were saying? Well, they don't do any of the fundraising to gather those books, and then they don't right. participate in our the press. They don't have anything to do with the sale. Right, okay. And I brought up at the last meeting, and I noticed it didn't make this month's minutes either, that the president knew to that told Susan two months ago at the Friends of the Library meeting that the Friends would be willing to participate in any way that she would need them. And I brought it up two meetings now, and we keep dismissing it. So I'm trying to figure out why you're making this change because they're not participating. The first time I'm hearing that. No, it's not. I said it last meeting, last month on the meeting, in the meeting as well. Listen to the minutes. Okay, so my question okay, is, are you doing this because you're saying they're not involved in the process when they offer to be part of the process? I have a question. Can she answer mine first? Go ahead. I answer first. So what is the purpose for doing this? I mean, why are now why are we now pulling these funds? The 
there's got to be a reason. And in your expert legal opinion, we're doing it wrong. I don't think you should be doing it legally. Doing what? S selling library assets and giving them to a private organization. But if a private organization is doing that, isn't it, is it they their funds? No, it's, not, no. it's our funds because no. we're selling a library asset. No, we're selling donations from the public, but also withdrawn materials from the collection. Okay, so because of the, the withdrawn materials from the collection, that's the library's portion. But, of but also the donations if, were if made the, to the, the library. Yeah, if the donations are made to the library, it becomes an asset of the library, the library accepts them. But I think they're made to the Friends of the Library. That's who the donations go to. It's all part of, that was the purpose of the Friends of the Library, having books donated and sold. Isn't that in their description? The Friends of the Library have been in existence since the early 60s to do fundraising for the library. I have a question. Was it originally because of legal issues that they had to have that group? Uh, no, I think it back. It's it's almost started at the same time as the library, and they would raise money for particular things. Like when they wanted to have a bookmobile, they went out and they raised money for a bookmobile. That's a description. Yeah, we have a uh, policy. And my question to you is: This is the first. Granted, I wasn't here at the last meeting. This is the first time hearing this. And my question to you is this: We've talked about this several times, several different meetings. Talked about the fact. They didn't have any volunteers to doing the sales, that the library staff is doing it. And now, since we've decided not to give them the money, now they're saying, well, hey, we'll do it. I'm sorry, you're wrong. Two months before you made this decision, Chris Hanusiak told you at their meeting that they would be willing to help with the process. You came to this board meeting two months after that didn't explain that to anyone. When I brought it to your attention, he didn't even admit that he said it. I, I don't so recall what I'm trying to say here is, if we're going to take legal action, let's put all the facts on the table. Okay, and if you're doing this because they're not participating, you're wrong. They said they would be willing to help. Okay, so that's duly noted that they're willing to help. I got it. So okay. why are we so saying they're, said, they're not some, about? That now I'm gonna go around the, around the table and Get everyone else's opinion. But here's my no, point. No, no, is it it's an an we, no. We, we're doing no, it. It's right. We're doing no. Exactly your position. And now it's I'm going to go around the table and see what everyone else has to say. About Rob, what? do you have any anything to say about um, having the friends have money, have the money given to them or not? I, I would side with our legal counsel. Mark. I've been on this board for 13 years now, and I've not known of one friend uh, working in the library uh, volunteering uh, in the book sale in, in any way. I mean, I understand that years ago the friends probably had volunteers who were working the book sales, but that's not that's not happening anymore. Thank you, Karen. Uh, I just came in, but we've talked about that right. before, so I think I'm so familiar with this issue. And, and, and I think that is right that uh, people are donating books to the library, not to the few individuals who belong to the friends of the library. It's not for the benefits of those individuals so they can have, you know, take trips or have uh, events or whatever for themselves. That's not why they donate, why people donate books. They donate it for the, for the benefit of the library, which serves the entire community. And once those assets are donated to the library, um, they belong to the library. And, and we can't give assets away for free to private organizations. And my position is, that's one reason why Dennis is here, because I really wanted to hear exactly what the legal position was. So now that I do know that, I too side with that. So what is the legal um, position again based on, what, what, what are we? There's, no, there's certainly no legal obligation to transfer funds to the friends of the library. Certainly, no legal obligation to that. If the library is selling its assets, collecting the money, putting it into its accounts, I find it difficult from a legal perspective where you can where you can simply write a check to a private organization, uh, as well liked as it is, um, for library funds. Okay, well, library I understand funds. that, but since we're selling library assets for a, for a percentage of them. And we have collections. 
are these two separate issues? And we have donations. What do you mean by collections? We have donations from the public. Are these two separate issues? If, if you're talking about collections donations. or donations Sorry. to the library, it's a library. It's not the Friends. It'd be different if it was to the Friends groups. And but of course, I, oh. if the donations of the books were to the Friends group and the Friends sold those books, obviously that would be their, their money. Okay. These are donate. These are this is library assets you're talking about. Whether it's okay. money and donations or it's a, a book or a material. So then our position is all of these donations have never been to the friends of the library. They've been to they've been given to they've been given to the library. So that's why they're the friends of the library has no possession of them. Is that what, the legality of this all? I don't know what the I don't know what donations you're talking about or who donated what to who. The public donates books but, to the friends of the library, but now I'm hearing they don't donate them to the friends of the library. They don't donate them to the library, and that's why you're saying they have no right to the money. Correct. Okay, so we're we're sure that they've never been donated to the friends of the library. Nobody ever comes in and says, I have some books to donate to the friends of the library. They come in and they say, I have books to donate to the library. Who established that, that whole process of selling books? Was it a friend's the process or is it something that you implemented? I mean, this isn't as gray as it seems. I mean, this had to begin somewhere with somebody's well, the, idea. The friends, what was it? The friends uh, would have periodic, like, once or twice a year book sales, and they, back in the 1960s, ran those book sales. And But in the last 20 years, they've had little to no role in it. In the last 15 years, they've had absolutely no role so in it. So the book sales generated people bringing in books so they could be sold at that time. Is that what it was all about? Honestly, I don't know. I mean, I wasn't here. I, and all, people, yeah, and you know, it's up to you. And as long I, as you feel it, and we're and not doing anything else. Yeah, and all I can say is, and all I, oh go ahead. Okay. Well, well, well Barbara had her, her head up. Yeah, whatever somewhere. happened in the past is really kind of irrelevant now. I mean, we're making our decision based on what we see right happening right now in the last 10, 15 years. Go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say exactly. So, Joe Schmo said, "Hey, let's do this." Now we got to still pay Joe Schmo 20, 30 years later. And he's got nothing to do with it. It doesn't make sense. Seriously, you, especially since the library staff is doing with a lot of the work, all the work. Well, some and volunteers, volunteers and a lot of volunteers, volunteers. actually. But volunteers. since the library staff is doing a, a lot of the work, I, and the funds for that is coming out of the library, why shouldn't this be going to the library? Especially since the books are donated to the library. Do we ever determine how much time is involved in this process? Yeah, I'm really not interested in discussing that unless the rest of the board wants to continue this. Well, it's, yeah. it's part of the situation. I mean, if you have all these people working on a process. The bottom line is that the friends were no, I guess organized right. to raise money for the library and to promote the services and collections of the library to the residents. That is their job us handing them money and them being gatekeepers on money is not useful. Does we discuss they're not gatekeepers. Does it make any sense? sense? Are they are gatekeepers. Are gatekeepers. They I have to ask them. No, no, okay, conditions. Yeah. Director. We've been over this. You guys, you have to at least, if you're going to make comments, you have to make them factually. Okay? Um, gatekeepers, sure. they refuse to pay for shelving that Susan wanted because of the pointed corners and they were afraid the shorter, younger children would get hurt. No, I mean, let's get realistic. The definition of a gatekeeper is someone who is in control and who stops and opens the flow of, and this is monetary, that's a gatekeeper. I'm very that's well aware of the word. I'm just saying, okay. you know, you, you brought up reasons and why they're controlling money. I tried to explain the situations. You dismiss that and just keep calling them gatekeepers. It's your decision. I know, you know, there are more of you than me, but. If you do whatever you want, as long as he feels you're not doing anything legally wrong, then you don't have anything to worry about. Well, we heard the legal opinion. Can we move on? Yes. So, um, Diane, please pick. Without much second. Oh, we don't have actually any second. That was just a discussion. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you for everyone's input. Thank you, Dennis. Yes. Okay. I know. So, Thank you, Craig, and thank you, everyone else. I will now entertain a motion to approve the payment of bills for operating expenses of $221,749.72. 
payroll expenses of $265,290.73 and special reserve expenses of $9,027 for a total monthly expense of $496,067.45. So moved. Barb? Second. Patty? Any discussion? Okay, Diane, please take a roll. Barbara? Yes. Rob? Yes. Carolyn? Um, yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Karen? Yes. Okay, uh, next we need to approve the payment of the December bills. It was inadvertently missed in last month's meeting. The checks have already been sent out, so this is a formality. I will now entertain a motion to approve the payment of bills for operating expenses of $239,101.89, payroll expenses of $276,903.29, and special reserve expenses of $7,411.60, for total monthly expense of $523,416.78. So moved. Barb? Second. Patty. Any discussion? Just a clarification. Mm -hmm. You missed the entire. Um, yeah. You didn't vote on it, is what? You didn't change right. figures. You just missed it. Oh, Brian. I was, I was wondering why that was in Yeah. Great. You're, you're actually ratifying the payment of those bills that were already paid, correct? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Anyway, okay, Diane, please take a roll. Uh, Barbara? Yes. Rob? Yes. Karen? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Karen? Yes. Okay, next item on the agenda is the director's report. Susan? Mm -hmm. well, I, um, once again, began my director's report, the written report, with a quote from a five-star review that we got on Facebook, which was extremely complimentary. And I just hope that you all get a chance to enjoy the nice things that people post about the library, because you guys play a big role in that. I just wanted to thank um, all you trustees who came to the uh, opening night of the I Love Pizza exhibit. It was a really fun night. It was just felt like a community party. And um, I think people had a really nice time. And once again, the pizza was completely donated <coughs> by, um, by a family. I presume they were sent a very nice thank you note, because it was very generous of them to mm -hmm. all that pizza. Yeah, they, they're, it's, and it's home run in pizza, to say the record, mm -hmm. to Park Ridge. So we really appreciate it. And they will be donating pizza once again in April for National Library. So they're very nice to oh, us. Nice. I also just wanted to mention that um, you voted a few months ago on improving the Wi-Fi access in the building, and that project is now completed. And I just wanted to remind you that uh, 30000 of that money, of the 40000 that was spent on that, came from federal government funds. From, a grant that Rich had written, so mm -hmm. we did, cool. did a Rich. ton of work on that, so um, that was great. Um, he also is getting ready to uh, switch us over from our current uh, <coughs> office uh, to 365. He's getting the work to move us to the cloud, so that's going to be a huge project. <laughs> And then um, uh, I understand from Dave that our elevator is going to need some work in the near future, that the, they have changed some of the regulations and the codes. Um, so that's all the uh, stuff to do with the building. Um, I also wanted to pass along a suggestion that I got from a member of the staff. Um, you know, you, we had, I had asked that you change the personal days a few months ago, and one of the staff, um, she wasn't trying to get those personal days all back again, but she did have this make the suggestion that maybe it would be nice if, in addition to the cash that they get on their 10 year, 15 year, 20 year, 25 year anniversary, that they got one personal day just for that year. And I thought that seemed like a reasonable suggestion, so I just thought I would pass that along to the board, and you can think about it. And if you decide that's something you would be interested in pursuing, let me know, and I can change the policy again. But I at least wanted to be able to tell her that I brought that suggestion to the board because, you know, she wasn't asking to get back all those personal days, but I thought that was a reasonable suggestion. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it and decide that you would like me to pursue that, I will. And then I just wanted to um, mention something that I had put briefly in my report, which is that um, we are getting ready to move our integrated library system, which is the system that runs it's our catalog, it's our patron database, it's all the records of the library. We're getting ready to move that. CCS 
his contract with Cersei Dynance is running out. They have spent the last nine months uh, working very intensively on analyzing what our choices are, and uh, they decided to go with a different company in the future. So we will be migrating our system, assuming that the negotiations go well. Um, what the governing board voted for last month is to put together a negotiating team to begin negotiations to move us to Polaris, which is part of the innovative uh, consortium. So we, the things that they liked about it is that is they work primarily with public libraries, so it's very patron-centered. And the timeline for that switch over will be spring of 2018, um, and you will be hearing a lot about this over the next few months because it's going to be an absolutely enormous project, and it will involve um, some change in our CCS funding. We'll have to, have to bring you um, a change in the amount of money that we pay to them. Just wanted you to get a heads up that that was going to be a big project coming. And that was all I have for today. Oh, I, well, um, Greg reminds me that I should mention that I got the first draft of the strategic plan on Sunday. And so the way that works is that I am reviewing it with my staff. Uh, then it goes to Linda for her to review. And then probably at next month's meeting, it comes to all of you to review. And I will give you enough time to look at it before the meeting. Cool. It looks really good to me. I think it really hits all the things that we talked about, and, but kind of synthesizes it, organizes it in a very coherent way. So I was happy with it. Okay, was that the communications also? Uh, no, I did have a couple communications. I wanted to point out to you on page 37, there is this really nice email that Cindy got um, from the person that won, I think it was, did she win the top prize? Year. She year. Yeah, we had a poetry contest uh, last year. And then she won third state level, um, statewide for her poem. Yeah. Oh. Poetry contest at the yeah. state level, she won third. And, and I feel like this is partly due to Cindy because Cindy changed the rules of our poetry contest so that people could submit their poetry to that contest. So she obviously mm -hmm. was delighted. And then you see the last, uh, the PS there is also very nice. And then on page 40, I just thought you'd like to see the cute note that Donna, our team librarian, got from the New Hope School. So those are the communications. Okay, buildings and ground, Barbara. Mm -hmm. the buildings and grounds. Um, I think so. Yeah, we, um, I think the, um, Dan had talked with the village and it looks like one of the signs that he had proposed is actually not going to be legal and they will not grant a variance on it. So he's working on the revision right now. One of the four in Oakton Court? That's the one at Oakton Court in Oakton Court, Waukegan because the, they actually had it wrong on their website and I guess Dan was showing it to them like with it up on the screen and they were kind of embarrassed that, you know, he had done the sign according to their guidelines but if their guidelines were actually incorrect. So it, it's due to the child running out from behind it. It, it, it the one on the corner there, the, the worry is that it's right by the street and a child can run out from behind it and get hit. So he is revising that to be a more vertical sign that would oh, go in the, the corner one of the parking lot. The one right on the corner. Right. The corner. Oh, yeah. yeah, but it was kind of like a block. Yep. Yeah, yeah. it was cute. They said that they they, yeah, they could not approve it and he, they could keep it as for variance, but we would not get it. So, uh, so he, it's, he's uh, uh, back to the drawing table on that one. Times, yeah. So I thought maybe the variance changed. Yeah. I know they have one on or something else. No. Yeah. So technically the variance might Maybe something happened, all to but then they would have taken it up. It's all to do with the triangle between the property line and the street and the sidewalk, and it's Probably. technical, so. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, so that's, that's popular. Okay. Thanks. Um, Friends of the Library, Carolyn? Um, no report. And legislative? Legislative. Dodie and I are attending the legislative breakfast um, on Monday. Yeah, on Monday, where there are a number of um, legislators that are going to be there, including what we call it from our district. Okay. Well, will you provide us more information as to where they're going? Are you going to go to that? Yeah. Okay. I will send it to you. No, I'm going to get to you. I will send it to you. Okay. All right. Uh, I will send you that. Great. Okay. Rails? Okay. 
All right, and there's my secretary report. All right, under new business, um, let's see. Okay. Um, Barbara requests that we vi revisit the subject of becoming a passport agency. Barb? Yeah, I want to read. Well, not revisit, but I just want the status on. on See the what our case I was in the I was in the Niles uh, post office. Uh, mm -hmm. Was it a week? Not last Saturday, but the Saturday before that. And, and it was about 9:30. There must have been 50 people in line waiting for passports. Mm -hmm. I'm not kidding. 50. 50 five old. Five old. Five old. I'd like to second those comments. I wasn't there that day, but yeah. I've been in the uh, post office on other Saturdays, and there's always a huge line of people trying to get passports. So we I still bad that I'm standing on the We talked about getting a right service agency. agency. Mm -hmm. you know, have we talked to the post office yet? You know, have, have we gotten that going? Uh, well, it wouldn't be talking to the post office, it's talking to the uh, State Department, which I actually okay. have pursued uh -huh. that. Uh -huh. um, I have hired a consultant that is the one, the person that set the pro it up at the ELA Library. They've been extremely successful at ELA. She now is working for the Skokie Public Library, but she's going to consult with us. Um, and she's coming by next week to meet with me and kind of see our layout, because our layout is so complicated here with the four floors. and. Uh -huh. Um, and you do you do end up dealing with a number of people and you want them to be happy and comfortable while they're waiting So you want to have a good flow for how things go But you still have to follow all of the legal guidelines and have everything locked up properly And so I want to get her input into that. So I should have a lot more to tell you next month Okay, because otherwise I wasn't brought up with the strategic plan But there could be something that we can slip into the strategic plan if need be It certainly could fit into one of the categories as one of the, the Community tasks that get done, done right? Yeah any idea once, even if for next month, what kind of time frame we're talking? It would really depend on whether we thought that it was best to build a new desk to accommodate it, or if we were going to try starting out using our existing desks and go from there. And plus, I don't know how fast the State Department would move either. Okay. You know, getting us trained. Yeah, and just if you can refresh my memory, I know we were, we were concerned with cost and staffing, and it's definitely staffing we, issue. Did we ever um, come up with the numbers that we would be making money? Or is it just kind of that you're just making, like... You know, it's really, really hard to predict. I was talking to the director of Prospect Heights Library. They just started theirs a few months ago. They were expecting to get 400 in the year because they thought it would be kind of a slow ramping up, and they had 400 in January. So it really could be a big deal. And, and we I get, what, $25? $25 a passport. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we're, we'd be providing a service to the community plus making some money for the library. Yes. So I, think we should, I think I just want to say, you know, I'm not going to be here much longer. I'd just like to step that up faster and put it on fast track because it's just mm -hmm. taking too long to get that going. So so have you not determined the staffing needs to just handle one passport? Have you been able to get that information? No, because I don't know what level of person is appropriate to be doing that. I don't know if I want to be using circulation clerks, paraprofessionals, you know librarians. They don't. They don't require. It has to be a full-time employee of the library, a permanent employee of the library. Do you know what the process is that's required for someone? Sure, she'll find that out with the person from the state department. Somewhere. The libraries you've talked to aren't aware of who they use at for, for this type of. They use different. It's different at different libraries. It really depends a lot on their setup, and different libraries use different staff. So you. Number of ways. I guess what I'm trying to say is, what is the process involved to? Have someone come in and a staff, a person from the Niles Library, assist them in completing this application. Have you ever gotten a passport? Yes. Well, you know kind of what the interaction. So, the sarcasm I could do without. But my other question is, you mentioned before. I think it was um, Barbara. You said, well, once you've done one, it's no big deal. But the issue is, when a person comes into you and they're not prepared, where does this? half filled out application go or how much time is going to be necessary somebody must be able to provide you with that information that's, especially if they're already doing this that's why i'm talking to the person that has been working at ELA for the last month years on it she's got a lot of information on her website but i think getting her real life perspective of what it would be like to function in this building and managing the flow of traffic would be very helpful so so your concern is the flow of traffic or the process both it's the whole the whole the whole thing 
and you will get that information later. Is that what you're saying? I will come to the board with the information that I have. I will have more information for you next month, and okay. probably a recommendation for the next steps. And I'm sorry, who's the person? Her name is Leah White, and she is with. She works currently for the Scobie Public Library, but she was at the Elo Library. For oh, so years. she's another library person who is yes. already going through this. Yes, she is. She's kind of the expert. She has done a lot of presenting at conferences and things like that. She really is trying, trying to just get her this. I she's see. trying to get people, libraries, oh, okay. to sign on okay. to this because okay, great. There's, it's such a good benefit to both the library and to the community. Mm -hmm. Maybe one more thing that you could ask her, and or you might already know this answer, um, is any are you or someone else, one of the other, um, somebody on your team, able to go and just shadow and just kind of look and watch the process when well, they're trying to we, get we did idea. that with Leah. Uh, the Greg and Cindy and I took a trip to Ila and they walked us through all of their processes and we, mm -hmm. we could watch it oh, a little okay. bit. But you know it's one of those things that's such an individual thing because it really is it's, you know it might be a family of five or it might be one person but they don't have the right information or right. you know the one may go five minutes, one may go twenty. So I, that's why it's really hard for me to come up with a solid number for you. Mm -hmm. I think that there's going to be a whole lot of learning through right. experience. Well, if we can look into that further, I think that's mm -hmm. the point we want to make today is to yeah. bring some more information Good back idea. to the board. Okay, yeah. hey, thank you, Barb. Okay, um, Greg, a short presentation to explain the budget timeline for this year. Okay, uh, I just have a, a pretty simple uh, PowerPoint. So um, this is very similar to uh, uh, to last year. Um, the first three steps are uh, the steps that, that we're taking internally here. Um, we're starting, you know, with, with the presentation to the uh, board of trustees uh, of the 17-18 budget calendar. Uh, first draft budgets were due from all of the operating departments on March 6th, and for the two to three weeks uh, subsequent, we'll be uh, performing analysis and cross-checking and compiling the numbers into uh, into a report, which will be presented for the first time to the board on April 19th uh, at the regular board meeting. Uh, what we plan for is to make a second presentation of the budget um, on May 17th, which is the next regular board meeting, followed by uh, the tentative uh, budget and appropriation uh, ordinance uh, to be posted for public, uh, for the public in announcement of the public hearing. Uh, public hearing on the tentative budget will be uh, June 21st uh, with final approval at the uh, meeting uh, immediately following the, the hearing. Um, so very similar uh, to, uh, to last year. All of the board dates are in the uh, in the director's report in the calendar at the uh, at the end of the director's report so you know if you're looking for a list of those dates you already get them um, what's not here is a uh, special meeting we had a special meeting last year to uh, to discuss the budget which was i believe it was approximately a week or so subsequent to the uh, first presentation of the budget to the uh, to the board and uh, at and it was at that meeting that we actually did the uh, that we did the uh, approval of the tentative budget, um, and then and then we uh, uh, progressed from there. So uh, you know the, the open question that we have here is is there a need for a special meeting uh, to discuss the budget, or can uh, can the board live with two presentations, one in April uh, and one in May? to uh, discuss and uh, make whatever adjustments they, uh, you guys feel is necessary. Can I ask a question? You're talking the extra meeting, when would this extra meeting be? Oh, you'd have to determine, you'd have to coordinate calendars. Okay. Yeah. But it would, um, it would have to be uh, before the May meeting. You know, so it would have to be sometime between the April meeting and the May meeting, the April meeting. Uh, if we just look back here, the April meeting is on the 19th of, of April, and the May meeting is on the 18th. Um, sorry, I'm sorry, on the 17th. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason that we're dealing with time frames like that is that we need to 
have the tentative budget available for public uh, uh, mm -hmm. review mm -hmm. 30 days prior to passage, mm -hmm. or I'm sorry, prior to hearing. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, doing it this way, it kind of, it makes it a little bit tight, but manageable. If, uh, if we go beyond May, the May 17th meeting, then we start looking at a later uh, hearing date and final, uh, final adoption. Yeah, and you need it finally adopted by. Well, the statu statutory limit for August. The statutory limitation, I think, is the, like the fourth Tuesday in September. Okay. It's something like that. So it's and not like we're running late with this time frame at all. No, no, no we're actually no, uh, we're actually yeah. very uh, very early. Um, uh, typically, in, in years before last year, we were. Um, regularly approving the budget like at the August meeting. Mm -hmm. um, uh, some, of, uh, some of our public uh, objected to that, wanted a budget in place prior to the end of the year, so we moved uh, everything up to, you know, to accelerate, to accommodate. Mm -hmm. um, although there is no real legal reason to do that. Mm -hmm. Around and just say who would like a, another question. Yeah. What's public review of the budget? When somebody from the public gets a copy and is able to review it. What's your process of a public review? You send out copies. I don't understand that process. Um, it it's available at the library. Oh, so people would come in if they if they're aware of it. Mm -hmm. Will we be having a meeting for the public to listen to your presentation? That's the public hearing. So, and that will uh, be June 21st. So that's after? That, that would not be a meeting where he's walking the public through it. That would be the place where the public could come and say, I have a problem with this for this reason. So it's basically public comment. Well, how could they have a comment if we haven't taken the time to review the budget? Don't they could come to the, at either of the two meeting, yeah, meetings wrong. where the budget is being covered. So, then, so those presentation meetings, the first and second presentation meetings? Yeah. So do we invite the public? Is that how we do this? They're always invited. Yeah. Well, I meant specifically, because I've gotten some emails that um, we make decisions and we don't inform the taxpayers to be part of all of this review and decision making. So the budget will be another big deal. So I'm wondering, how are we going to go about inviting the public? And how do you invite them that we're having our first and second presentation about our budget? So there aren't any issues. Well, our agenda is always supposed to put a term to the Open Meeting Act. So, so do we put it in the paper that the library will be reviewing their 2017-18 budget? It's a big deal. Just like IMRF was a big deal. Every year. I think the more of the big deal is that if we want to have a meeting prior and discuss it, budget only, and that right now we should make a decision because then that'll be also on the table for the community to know. Yeah, let's make that decision first. Yeah, let's yes. mark. Let's well, I'm just bringing it up because I have this email came to me and, and it's any, my fiduciary responsibility. And well, not and right, and anybody can come and do public content and uh, comment on okay. any meeting. So. No, but what I meant, we, we should take the time, I think, to discuss the budget and the public should be there so they can't say that we didn't. All right, so, you're, so you're for having an extra meeting between April and May? For this specific purpose? For budget only. If it's, if it's for not, the budget. If it's not going to happen in presentation one and two, right. then sure. Okay, so. Well, I mean, it would be the same thing that would be in presentation one and two. It's just if you wanted to single out a Right, but we can go it. over it and we would go line by line sure. or we can actually review it and do it. it. Okay, so that's what we're asking right now. Oh, okay. Do we want to have an extra meeting? between April and May, after Greg has made his first presentation, then we can come have a special board meeting in between, go through it, have any questions answered, any concerns, anything that we see that we would possibly you know, want to discuss, and then you would have another pres presentation in May, correct? And then, so that's well. Actually, going. when we did it last year, we had the April original presentation. Then we had the special board meeting right. with the presentation. Then we did not discuss it in May. Oh, so okay. Was, then it was approved or not? It was approved, approved in okay. June. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. So Thank it you. wouldn't be three presentations. Right. It would be two. Right. So then, one of those presentations would be eliminated because right. we're having an extra meeting. Exactly. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank sure. you for clarifying. 
Oh, so we would not discuss it at one of the other meetings we, at all? You could, you could discuss it if you wanted, certainly. Oh, it could be okay. on the agenda, but they, okay. there wouldn't be... It, the way it's set out here is first presentation, second presentation. The second presentation would take care of, take place at the second board meeting, at the special board meeting. Oh, okay, all right. Certainly could still be on the agenda, but it wouldn't be Greg walking through the entire thing. Okay. Meaning it was the same presentation. Yeah, the basically. Second. Right, well, well okay, is that how I looked at it? I, yeah, I thought it was, it was like, was like, a, like a, oh, yes. a, a, a amended, like an amended yeah. 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 presentation well, after the second, discussion. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you guys uh, at the April 1 said, oh, this isn't looking right to us, we want this adjusted in this way, then the second presentation yeah. would incorporate those changes. And who knows, if the first presentation goes well and we end up getting through and going line by line and seeing what we do, and it, it works out, we don't feel like we need a special one, then... But that would have to be a board decision. I mean, so, like, so now we're saying we'll have a board meeting and we'll go through our budget with the first presentation all in one night? I'm just saying, no. who knows? Let's, let's schedule a special board meeting is what I'm oh, is that saying what we are? tonight. Okay. Yeah, let's, okay. But I mean, I'm just saying, you know, who knows? Maybe everything will look wonderful. But um, for right now, does everyone agree that we should have a special board meeting? Just, I mean, that is one of our most important things that we set. So a special board meeting. Well, there's one else to say, but I'll come to it. <laughs> I just think we can handle it at a regular meeting, but that's okay. Sorry. Well, maybe it'll be a 10 minute uh, meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I leave <laughs> down no. um, Because right. now we have to find a date. Right. How about if I send you guys some dates? Because I don't know when the rooms are empty and things like that. Question. When will you be sending out that email since I don't have access to email as readily as a lot of the board members? I probably won't do it until early next week. Okay. Now, could yeah. you, would you mind sending me a text? Is that too? No, it's fine. Because I, I really can't get into my email. I don't want to miss it. Thank you. Now, can I ask my question? Yes. Uh, would it be in this room or would it be in another room? So it's it depend on the availability. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Is this for our budget review meeting? Right. Well, Special meeting. Okay, so the, but this is when we're inviting the public to, right? The public are invited, invited to everything. everything. Okay. Again, are we not going to inform the public more than just our, our general meetings that we are reviewing our budget? How else are we supposed to do it? I don't know. The paper's a good place. Well, I mean, apparently your agendas aren't enough, mm -hmm. and I get to hear about it. Well, right. each each meeting uh, is uh, advertised uh, 48 hours or more uh, before the meeting takes place. Uh, our, our agendas and all the uh, board packet materials are available on our website. Um, and uh, for the uh, June 21st uh, public hearing, uh, that will actually be uh, uh, printed in a uh, public newspaper, uh, most likely the journal I think we're using. Okay, and the June point. 21st meeting is, is for uh, meeting? Is, uh, right is, the, is the public hearing on the tentative budget and appropriation ordinance. Is that before this meeting that we reviewed? It's about? after. Yeah, it's, right, after. it's right before it's, it's uh, the meeting at which we do the uh, and, the final and they'll be able to passage. ask questions or comments. Well, it's, everybody is around the table to set. They may ask questions and comments as part of public comments during any of the board meetings as well as any of the meetings subject to open meetings. Right. 48 hours isn't really enough time for a <coughs> municipality to get the Well, the law says 48 hours. I know. I totally understand hours. it. I'm and, saying... Excuse me. And we do it for Friday for the following Wednesday. I know. But for a budget, which is a hot topic, <coughs> we would need more than 48 hours. So back to your June 21st meeting, which you put days. in the journal, that would, would be, be for that. and that would be a meeting where we would discuss <coughs> and they could come with any comments. No. Well, no. I mean, that would it's, be the meeting where it's solely for public comment. It's, right. it's a public hearing. It's basically they have the opportunity to say what they think. It is not a, another meeting where the budget is being discussed. Unless you guys choose to discuss it during that meeting, which you certainly could do, that's up to you. So if I was a taxpayer and I wanted to come to a meeting when you discuss your budget, that meeting would be appropriate for them? No, that meeting would be the one where they would come and raise their objections if they had an objection to it. 
otherwise they would they would receive those meetings. and how would they obtain objections because they would know to come here and look at your budget that you're preparing i'm just trying to figure out why you just can't put it in the journal that you're well, it's expensive i mean we could do that if that's the, what the board wants to do it's we certainly we could do that your ads in the journal are quite expensive but if that's what the board wants to do, well, you certainly could do that. I don't know how that We do the same I mean, thing every single year at the same right. time. And every year so, they complain, but it's fine. It's your problem. I didn't know it was expensive for you to put an article in the journal. Well, well, it's not never article. Article. well you said about press release, but if we, if you want an ad in the journal, that costs money. Well, just it's notifying the public that this is taking place. What about a press release? Period. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a press, press release. release. For this budget review meeting, if they're interested, they can come. Yeah. Can they comment at that meeting? Yeah, comment public comments. Meeting. They can't interrupt the meeting to comment, but they can comment during public comments. So when the meeting's over, then you would ask for public comments? That would depend no. on what order you want on the agenda. Oh. Which one is this? Which budget one? review. You mean in the, in the special? The special meeting? board meeting. The special board meeting. Would it be logical if they're going to have a comment that would be after they heard us talk about the budget? So I mean, I've seen it sense. done both ways. That would make, make sense. Okay, because I've been at the, the only village. thing is just that they're here the whole time. If they don't, if they have something they don't want to say, then they have to wait for the whole meeting. Mm -hmm. It can go either way. Okay. It just or depends on the you know depends okay. on the comments. You don't know. Okay. Well, so I'm thinking we're going to generate. Here. They might yeah. come in already with an idea, and then they already know what they want to say, and yeah, then they can say it before point. we make our decisions. Or if it's after, then it might be you know. Good idea. That's a good point. Okay. Great. Yeah, it can go really easy. All these dates are on the calendar as well. These dates are right. Like I mean, on the like. Yes. I oh. went to the website. I could find yeah, the date on the, on the calendar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and anybody thanks. who's interested in the budget means just going to be looking for those dates anyway. Right. We, it's not like we have to go out and the board. No, I'm thinking this. Yeah. Like, I mean, except for years back when they were a little bit later, but now we've been pretty uniform. Okay. Um, I have more other questions. Yeah, go ahead. Um, well, actually, it's for Carol. Are, are the email that you're getting, are you receiving that from your trustee account, or is this a personal account? From my trustee account. So that, because the people then, they, sh they would know to go to the website. If they're, that they're finding information to email you, they should be able to find the information. Okay. The, the position is, when we make such costly decisions like IMRF and employee benefits and the budget, that as the, what did he say? You, your fiduciary responsibility lies to the taxpayers of the district. Um, and he said that in doing so, um, by not informing them, we're avoiding taxpayer interest. So we owe them to let them know when we're doing something. They should be available. They should be aware of our discussions. They should hear all of this, not while the library passed this or the library passed that. Yes, I'm sure he knows, or I know some people know, but I'm saying if you want to reach the taxpayers, if you put something in the paper, they'll see it. Everyone's not on the website. This is his opinion based on a lot of people from the area. Right, but there was, I mean, what can he mention? I'm Rob. You mean his complaint, our fiduciary responsibility to the taxpayers? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's nothing specific was mentioned? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, I am a ref was something she said. Oh, okay. All right. She said such right. yes. Next, I need a motion to approve changes to personnel policy 4.08 vacation policies. Motion. Oh. Here. So moved. Second. Here. Gabby? Susan, what is the change? Um, the change is to, um, you recall that a couple of months ago, and you had this at your place. Um, that's this thing. Yeah. Um, we changed the vacation allowance so that part timers began accruing vacation time immediately instead of making them wait three years to get their first vacation week. What we forgot to do is put a cap on that or say what the rate of accrual was. So now this adds the rate of accrual back onto the policy. It basically puts back what was taken out and also clarifies what a work day is, how we calculate that just to be, make it as clear as possible. So the changes are in bold. Um, and they get, uh, if they, they immediately start with one week of vacation, um, a full-time employee starts with two weeks of vacation, or three weeks if they're a librarian. 
um, and then they accrue an extra day every year until they can hit a cap of two weeks. The way it was worded before, it would have been going off into infinity. Okay, any discussion? Okay, Karen? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Rob? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Candy? Yes. Yes. Linda? Yes. Okay, next on the agenda, I would like to take a few minutes to discuss how trustees request information from staff. And Yeah. Is this something we have to have a looking at or is this can you do it for your special things? Oh, that document's coming away. Okay, okay. Okay. You've got to try to do that, you know, in the bottom. <laughs> Everyone just wants to look it over. Oh, it's safe. Oh, gosh, it looks interesting. Any questions or concerns about reading a draft? Um, Susan creates a draft. This is something Tim Spadoni has been asking for for a while. He thought mm -hmm. that he felt like the guidelines weren't, he wasn't clear on them, he didn't think anybody else was clear on them, and he thought it would be good to sort of have an agreed upon guidelines. So I found a document in Linda's files, and eventually I managed to figure out where it came from, and it's actually the Public Library Trustee Manual has just been updated. So I actually will give you a copy of the full manual, um, but this, these are some of the key points just having to do with board staff interaction and how to run an effective board meeting. So, yeah. and I'm I sorry, find you saying this is from the older manual? Yeah. I, uh, it's very much the same. I was reading through it quickly today, and, it, cause they, and they literally emailed it out today, which is a, quite a coincidence. But the, the, new the new manual was e literally emailed out today oh, after okay. I had just found it online that that's where Linda's document had come from. And I find myself going back to Robert's rules often just to try to think of running the meeting or 
what our role is, um, you know, asking questions of employees and board. I mean, I'm, I'm constantly reporting back. It would be nice to just have a nice um, abridged version of everything in one document, put it into our um, into our bylaws and our policies, and and abide by them. And kind of hold people. I hate to, I hate to really saying the word accountable, but sometimes I feel like it has a negative connotation. But yet, it's something that we do need to. Yeah, we all should be held accountable in many different ways, being board members mm -hmm. in all different all different mm -hmm. ways. So, um, with this in mind, um, I, I can just go around the the table, and we can ask Susan if. Or we can do a yay and nay. Um, we have Susan if we like her to um, create a policy or a resolution with this, and then we can look at it next meeting and we can vote on it. Uh, policies regarding like drainage, just, or um, well, just maybe like the whole. Did you want to put the whole? Well, if I could suggest what I yeah. would actually recommend doing is that the board just review this mm -hmm. um, every time you have a new board. So you'll have a new board starting in May, mm -hmm. and that you look at it together and everybody just agrees. To, because really, um, I don't think that all of these things belong in bylaws. Many of the things are already in bylaws, mm -hmm. but you would want a greatly detailed bylaw. And most of the policies are worried with running with the library, but these are sort of like agreed upon ground rules for the function of the board. So to put in the board packet and have yeah, this is our our, stand, our standing yeah. policies. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's that sounds good. good. Okay. That's yeah. good. That's that sounds good. good. So you're saying that we'll discuss this then review it and then discuss it at the next meeting? Or so we can prepare so we have this and then the next meeting well, it's not a discussion of a motion to put this in place as these are yeah. our guidelines. Yeah. Would that okay. be it? Yeah, it would be for that. Something we can do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I guess so. I'm just sort of wondering how these simplified Robert's rules will you know, overrule the regular Robert's rules. So I mean, it's, for, I think it's intended to just be a, a boiled down version of it. That is not in the trustee manual. That, and I could not locate where that piece of it came from. Um, but, you know, Robert's Rules is that long, so to have something that is more efficient. Yes. Yes. And just yes. kind of yes. leave it that way. Yes. So maybe I could leave that page off. This could be just be well, a, a, I, a helpful hint. Yeah, I, I don't know. It might be like perhaps a little oversimplified. I don't know. For instance, the very last one once a motion is put to a vote, that's the end of the motion, one or the other, it can't be reconsidered by the group. So it was passed to last unless his new motion to reconsider and rescind it. Robert's rules would say the motion to reconsider or rescind has to be made by someone to vote it the other way the time no, before. That's true. So, and that the reason for that is so that the losing party can't keep making the same motion over and over again, even though no one else has changed their mind. So what I'm saying is okay. this is fine, but it might be a little oversimplified. There might be some that's a good point. times when we actually want the regular rules. So maybe we should just State like if you have to really follow the yeah, law of the Robert Rules. Yes. Yeah, follow the law of the Robert Rules. Because I mean, I do. I refer to it all the time, constantly looking back to it. I guess you could look at this as a reference. Yeah. But even that site seems to overly simplify as to what the rules require for us. Okay. So, yeah, and I think we're doing pretty well with that, with the Robert's rules. The one thing that I'd like to be sure that we're all clear on, though, is the, the part where I'm expecting that if you guys want uh, me to do a lot of work on doing something, or Greg to do a lot of work on doing something, you have to ask for it in the board meeting. It can't be an individual trustee asking. You know, I think we've had this discussion over the years before, and we've always come as a group to the same conclusion. And I think we had that informal five-minute rule um, right. that if an uh, individual board member can ask Ray, uh, Susan, or another staff member. Well, you can only ask me or okay. Greg, is that, but, but I could convey it to the other staff. All right. 
if it's a request that is so simple, you can answer it within five minutes. And um, it's really something very simple, like, I forgot what the board meeting is, what's the day? I mean, something like that. Um, but if it's something that requires more work than that, more time, uh, it's really the entire board that directs the director how to spend time and resources. So if it's a, and, and we've had this discussion repeatedly in the past, and, and that's the conclusion that we've come to. Um, and I'd like to stick with that rule. And why would you feel it's not being followed now? I mean, what brought this all up? Your email to Greg asking for a hundred. And I'd like to read. And I'd like to read my email to Greg because it was a question. Okay. Hi, Greg. Based on the future plans of the library board to review and evaluate options for determining staff raises, I would like to request employee salary benefits pie charts, which was something he showed me a couple of years ago, which depict our current cost per employer. Is it possible to email this info to me or print copies easier for you? I appreciate, I appreciate your input regarding this request. Never heard from him. Heard he was on vacation. I think that's what you said. And then, but I sent a second email just saying, let's see, um, that I didn't know if he had received this. And I asked him again, and I asked him what his thoughts were. Now, I would think Greg could have responded and said, Carolyn, this is really a lot of work. And I don't know if it would benefit the board. Okay, that's all I needed. I just thought when we went into executive session and we plan on pursuing this, that this information would benefit all of us. But none of us know okay. what information identifies these I employees understand. and what they I do. understand what you thought in your so opinion. My However, point is, no, I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to stop it right here. Why? When, when I'm not something, finished? No, because when it's something that is that large of, a, of an ask, it needs to be brought here in front of everyone, right in front of all the community, and then asked and we all make that decision, it goes to Susan, and it goes to Brian, if we all want it. And you know what, but what it seems like is every time I send an email, whether it's to Greg or Susan, it either gets lost, they were too busy, they couldn't respond, they don't respond to my phone calls, and it was a simple question. Karen Diamond has called Greg and asked him numerous questions about IMRF. She stated it right here. I'm sure it wasn't a real quick, you know, gee, is he wearing a blue shirt or a red shirt today? I'm sure it was a bit detailed. So if my question is, or my request, you, it's out of the minutes, and you stated it, because you all wanted to know why I was bringing something to the board when you could have called Greg before the meeting. So when I send him an email before the meeting, it becomes a witch hunt. Okay, well, thank and then you when I much, ask Carolyn. at the meeting, it's a problem. So if it's when not I send, so it's my question to you is, when I send Greg an email, has he been instructed not to respond? Because if that's the case, then I won't send him one. No. Well, I never got a response no. from him. But the thing is, is everything should go to Susan, and if it's something over five minutes, then it has to be brought here, and that is what we've talked about multiple times here at the table. Okay, but my question that is, is, that is, that's it. I can't that determine it, if it's but five that's minutes. It. That's it. Okay, I cannot determine that's, if it's okay, five so minutes. Okay, so then you want to reply saying, Susan will tell you that's over five so minutes. So why can't I talk table. to Greg since Susan told me the report didn't even exist? Do you see how crazy this is? Okay, but you're asking for a pie chart for each individual employee. Well, let me tell you something. You go okay. into your spreadsheet, you click a button, and it prints. Okay. I didn't realize that's how complicated great. it was, but okay. it's okay. Okay. So my anyway. again, my question is, can I not send an email to Greg because I can assume he won't respond? Is that how we function here? That's my question to you, Linda. No. So no, I can. But Greg can. was on vacation. No, I've had issues in the past, so I'm trying to figure out, am I putting them in the when middle have, okay, by asking a question? Then, you know what, what I would suggest then, if you have a problem, let's take a date and time and we'll then we'll address it at that time. No, my question to you is, can I send Greg an email asking him a question and expect him to respond or is there a problem? What you should do is ask Susan a question because Susan should know exactly all the questions that are to be asked of their staff. And we can talk about this around the board. So we I should ask her if I can ask him the question. Is that the point? 
Susan should know what every employee is That's being fine. asked. I'm just asking. Is that what you're asking me? Her, she is the director. I know, but she's not knowledgeable like he is, so I went straight. There. I understand, but maybe she knows that maybe Kathy Toy's the person, and we don't talk to Greg. Maybe Kathy Toy's the. I don't know. Okay, I've never had a problem that. asking Greg questions until we have this we, new board. We have a problem with our board members. We've had it all along, and we need to stop it. We need to stop. Everyone going over the director's head, director not knowing what's happening in the library, and asking too many questions. It's just the way it is. And we need to know, as a board, what is being asked of our director. I don't know what questions she's, uh, Karen You're, Diamond asked Ray Fritz. I never got an email from so telling way, me that. Either this is what we have agreed. So why is it when I ask a question, it has to be in front of the board? But. Karen Diamond's called him numerous times. He's, he's never shared that with me. Have you ever called him? If I, if I called her, it's been at least six months ago, I think. Doesn't matter. You made a big deal about how you called him and asked questions. I think this is a mute point from now on. No, it's not. <coughs> it is mute. It is. Why is my question a problem and no one else's is a, is a problem? Because yours is more of an assignment you're giving, uh, Greg. You may or may not have called to ask a question, but you're giving an assignment to a library staff member, and, and that's not our policy. Okay, and all of a sudden we can't have we can't have dialogue here and end it. I had, it, had, it had to come you're to a board meeting. Him, you're asking him to spend time on an assignment, mm -hmm. and that's not how our policy is set up. Well, if we had this problem by, years ago with another board member who was. I'm not, I'm well, ladies, all right, just drop it. I'm okay. not trying to assign him work. I'm really trying to have a conversation with him, thinking this information would have been beneficial. Assignment. Just drop it. You drop it. Then, then we'll just drop it. it. As a new board member, since you did bring up the new board, I'd like to know when the hell I asked anybody any question except at the meeting. So oh, don't yeah. bring up the new board members. What are you talking about? You don't even listen to what comes out of your own mouth. And I'm getting tired of you shouting in my ear. Excuse me. Sure. Wow. You quit shouting in my ear and maybe I will. Okay. So, uh, next on the agenda. We are on unfinished business. I need to... Motion to approve Ordinance 17-01, changing the name of the Niles Public Library District and its Board of Trustees. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Barb? Okay. Second. Karen? Okay, any further discussion? I have one comment about yes. this. Um, I'm uh, very much in favor of changing the name as we had previously discussed. I just have one concern. I know that there are a number of people who have filed petitions to run for election, and uh, presumably they all collected signatures on a petition form that said they were running for a position of trustee of the Niles Public Library. Now, I, I'm just a little nervous about changing the name of the library. I think it's to be effective to my okay. one, to okay. partly so for that not, reason. Yeah. You're not worried about that in any way? No. Okay. no I, I just I don't want to mess up my office line. in May. Presumably, it'll still be the Niles Public Library. Okay. All right, fine. I just yeah, don't want to. We're trying to pre that. There's going to be problems. Yeah. yeah. Well, right, that's why we were saying July 1. That's right. right. We did, we did that's that. okay. It's okay. okay. all right. All right. Well, and I just have, can I ask one question? Yes. Our plans are to change the title to Niles, Maine. Now, um, at our last meeting, it came up that there are a few Glenview areas. Northfield, is that what it's called, that are being omitted? No, not Northfield Township. It's <coughs> in the corner right up in the corner. Which is not part of Maine, and it's not part of Niles. Right. So, our, our, is, are we doing the right thing? I mean, we're renaming the library for the second time and still not including everyone. As an attorney, is are we? What what is our? You can pick whatever name you want. To, you can pick whatever name you want. To pick. We're still doing ninety eight percent. Where before it was so kind of representing fifty. Okay, so that's the other so, question. The other question. I didn't know how big this portion. It's, of it's the, the little triangle right up on the very top. But in terms of dollars, like there isn't much revenue generated from that section mm -hmm. compared to all the other you that encompass to say not much revenue. You hate to put well, any people. That's how you I understand, but 
you know, you want to say, oh, this is less or more, but the thing is, I think percentage-wise, that is encompassing 40, probably 9.5% more than we did by just calling it the Niles Public Library, if I'm speaking so, correctly. Yeah, I think that's correct. So now Niles Main encompasses how well, well, about 99%. So it's that big? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know, I just kept thinking about this as I was going through Right, this I mean, you okay. wish you could make the name this long, but I mean... But 99% is good, I was just 99% is fantastic. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, anything else for... Are we still in the unfinished business? Yeah, okay, all right. Diane? Barbara? Uh, yes. Rob? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Yes. Linda? Yes. Karen? Yes. Okay. And the administrative policy. Okay, next is a motion to approve changes to the administrative policy 3.02 library rules. Do I hear a motion? Motion? Okay, motion. Patty? Second? Second. Karen? Yes. All right, Susan, what is the change? Um, Tim pointed out at last month's meeting that we had already previously discussed that we do allow people to conduct business in the library so that we need to take this rule out. Mm -hmm. um, Dennis, though, was commenting to me today that it opens the door on people doing any kind of business in the library. Mm -hmm. And so Greg was suggesting possibly we could just say they couldn't it, do retail or manufacturing in the library. I've not had a chance to discuss that. So we're not really ready to discuss this too if, much until we... If, if you want, we can postpone this and I don't have a conversation with Dennis about it. Yeah, actually, I, I think I can just second it, but I have some concerns about this too, because I, I just wonder what type of businesses people are going to try and conduct. Am I correct that we already have attorneys doing depositions in the library? Yep. Yeah, I know. That was my reaction too, Dennis. It's like, really? Wow. I mean, it just seems like that's a for-profit business, and most attorneys have to rent space to do depositions normally. That's part. That's a business. And I, when I heard that, I started. I don't know. I I just sort of worry about what type of businesses might take place and and what what's already taking place, and if it's really appropriate for a library and whether actually we're sort of you know stealing it come from other for-profit businesses I mean, most attorneys can afford to pay for space for their doing depositions and you know i have a question about that because and i read a few other libraries uh, parameters for this meeting space doesn't it say that you cannot use our space to make money or there's a term like you can't it's not just selling but for profit but a deposition comes with the cost and it's $2,500 easily. So that's the same thing as if he was selling cookies. I mean, they're just basically booking a study room. Yeah, but he right. makes money off that deposition. Yeah. Well, we don't ask people, you know, there are people that use it for tutoring. There are people that use it to write, you know, documents for their own business. I just, yeah. oh, so we don't ask why you're using it. We can't, you know, we don't really ask what the purpose is. No, I mean, it's, it's I thought businesses were, or, or categorized differently, and in some li libraries, there's like specifications. It's not just like I'm using a room to right. study. Right. Well, I mean, it's. I think Tim pointed that we had talked about this previously, and and gotten rid of that phrasing in some other policy, and we just was surprised that it was still in this policy. But it sounds like we need to do a little bit more. Um, these tutors are they not for profit? Sure, they are. I'm sure they're. I'm sure they're for profit. You sure they are for profit? Uh, yeah, I know they're not doing it. Uh, well, <laughs> maybe they are doing some it for organizations. Yeah, you know, offer private. Yeah, tutoring for free. Right. We, don't we don't ask. We don't ask. Well, Oakton people are eager, it, but that's not for profit. Who does? Oakton. No. Yes. Yeah. English is a second. Basically, we treat everybody the same. Um, we don't ask a lot of questions about what people are doing. We just set up the rules for you can't do certain things in the library, and we abide by those rules. I would sort of like to discuss uh, and play a role where only not-for-profit activities can take place in the library. I, I just have a concern with for-profit activities 
taking place in the library where people are operating a business, making a profit, not paying us any rent or anything like that. Um, you know, not for profit, charities, whatever, doing tutoring, I don't have that much of a problem with. But if they're making a profit, why should we be making a profit off of them? <laughs> this is what my point is. I just don't see why we're. Um, can I just also throw in one? Can I throw in one more yeah. comment? Is something I read um, for library space that's being um, scheduled for businesses. Um, something like having a meeting or um, whatever, like, like a deposition, they may only be able to schedule that once a quarter, and they have to pay for that room. So there are libraries that have all sorts of stipulations on this. Maybe we can come up well, with some. Well, I know the one, and they just approved for tutoring, which is really hard. So now even the high school kids can tutor even for $10, you know. Oh, the they life. can't oh, even, really? you know, they're making a little cash tutoring AP bio, know. and they aren't allowed to, unless they pay, I think, $10 an hour or yeah, something yeah. to the Park Ridge Public Library. Yeah, so yeah. you have to have a person going around, like, are you yeah. tutoring? If you are, you need to pay me. Well, yeah. I think, I think it's I just weird. That. It's Yeah, I know, but I think it's there's weird. Really a division. <laughs> I know, but like, how do you... Who's, who's I guess who's monitoring it? Yeah, Maybe that's a good question? Well, mm -hmm. it has to be rational, too. I mean, the problem with having a policy that doesn't prohibit any commercial right, activity right. is, no matter what the commercial activity is, whether is, you like it or is not, is wide open door. Uh, is welcome. And you oh. can't say because you're selling adult items here, uh, we don't like that, so you can't do it here. Um, mm -hmm. Or some other, some other, uh, Sales activities that you are unhappy with, you're not going to be able to discriminate against one kind of business versus another as long as it's legal. So, is there some kind of wording that would allow people to do um, if it's if it holds up your mission? Yeah, holds up your mission maybe. Well, educate. You know, was there some general class I mean, of things can, that we could we just could probably work on that? If okay. That's, if that if you don't want to eliminate eliminate commercial activities here all together, then yeah, yeah I think I mean, we have to set some parameters as best we can. Okay. So it sounds I like mean, I'll need to talk to the Yeah. Yeah. It, but you it really could. opened the door. Can I mention yeah. Go ahead. Can I just mention one other thing, Dennis? I did also read on another library website where it gave the director discretion to um, decide or not decide to allow someone to continue once they reserve the room. So they gave her a lot of leeway make the, I don't know if that's legal, but it was written on the Yeah, I get that, and I, I've seen it. Um, mm -hmm. The concern I have about that is someone saying, the reason that you are denying me is because you don't like the my speech, the activity I'm engaged in, the commercial speech uh, that I'm engaged in, and so you're using your discretion to discriminate against me and my product versus a kid right. tutor. Yeah, and you, you open yourself up to that, so, so you're, you're, I think you're better off from a legal perspective to be all in or all out, or have some real tight parameters on okay. what we're going right. to allow in terms of commercial speech in the library. Okay. Karen, did you? No, I, I was just wondering, I, I don't know that it would be likely to be a problem, but if we're letting in all kinds of commercial activity, but we also have to allow in religious activity. Let's say someone said, you know, uh, well, when I have a small congregation, I just want to use one of your rooms <coughs> for religious services. Well, I think the meeting room policy. Um, I, I don't know that it does. I don't have a policy, that yeah. probably, but I don't know that it does prohibit it necessarily. I mean, there's some libraries where they hold religious services. Though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as long as you don't, like, that's you're not. Mm -hmm. That's a board domains. decision as yeah. to whether or not you want that going on in your library. Yeah. Table this particular yeah, we're definitely have to table this. <laughs> All right, so um, if Karen and Patty will, yeah, or do we just go around and say that we want to table it? Yes, we'll make a motion to the table to sign up for the next okay. Okay. regular board meeting. Okay, Patty, and, so uh, motion to table. But Dennis, what do we do in the meeting? Well, our motion is just table, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's just sort of on hold. Yeah. If we all vote, yeah, I'll see the order. It's good the status quo is going to remain, whatever yeah. it is. Okay. Okay. So you need 
a motion to table a second and uh, discussion and then we'll Oh, call. okay. So Patty motion, Karen seconded. Um, any discussion? She's on the motion to table. For the did motion to table. Can, yeah, she, she did. Sure. Yeah, she did. Okay, please take a roll to table the motion about the administrative policy 3.02 library rules. So did Karen make the motion or Karen? Uh, Patty, Patty made, made the okay. motion to Karen the second, same as okay. the original. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Karen? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Rob? Yes. Karen? Yes. So now I'll go back to the table. The new personnel policy 4.31, no solicitation, no distribution. It was previously moved by Trustee Spadoni and seconded by Trustee Diamond. Susan, can you remind us of why we tabled this policy last time? Um, it was tabled because Tim pointed out that it prohibited, it, 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 in its pure wording, it prohibited staff from even selling a library bag. Um, so he wanted it wording in it uh, that would rule up, that would say it was okay to sell things. So what I added is this rule does not apply to materials being sold or given out by the library district. So that's the change that Tim had requested. However, I had another conversation with Dennis today and he is concerned about the last line of this um, being a violation of people's free speech. And so I think you might want to consider um, lining it out and amending the motion. It's the one that says non-employees are likewise prohibited from distributing material. Um, I think that an individual has a right on library premises, not necessarily in the library itself, but certainly outside on the public sidewalk uh, to distribute pamphlets and, and uh, uh, things like of that nature, as long as they're not disturbing or, um, or interfering with people. They have a First Amendment right to do it, in my opinion. And I don't think you can have a policy that says they can't. But you're talking about outside the library. Yeah, yeah that's what the premises. The library premises is oh. the building and the parking lot outside. Okay. Yeah, he's right. That's right. That's wrong. Yeah. So, so it is the building that they. So that wouldn't even mean like in an election. People well, couldn't even stand outside. Stand outside. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, we do is explicitly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It is a point to me. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. Un un unenforceable. It's yeah. unenforceable. Yeah, we have that. That is spelled out in another policy. And my objection to it really is just that it's this is a personnel policy, and so that's mm. having to do with more administrative things anyway. So I would be perfectly fine with taking that line out. Well, Susan, did you find out if there's some other policy? Prohibits the same. I, I couldn't find it, okay. but I have not had right. detail. Well, as long as we have it, that's what we have. Yeah, okay. that's yeah. What is this positive? So it says that kind of things are going to be. It's still, it, no, it doesn't belong to the personnel policy. So, so we're talking about taking that bottom the last line out? Yeah. Okay, are we. Voting on this then without that bottom line, or we you, you would have, have to agree to amend it. Right. Uh, oh, except for Tim Spinoni is not here, and he made the motion. <laughs> <laughs> so so there we are. Can I move to table? Yeah. Second. Okay, so we move to table. Um, to the next regular meeting in March. Uh, the action of the personnel policy 4.31, no solicitation, no distribution. Um, table by Karen Diamond, move for the one second. Thank you. Patty, thank you. So any discussion? Take it all. Karen? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Rob? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Andy? Yes. Yes. Okay. Is there any other? Okay, I move to entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. So move. Barb, Patty, everyone in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you very much, everyone.